Welcome to the Maxima Dungeon here in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, we have just wrapped our 2016 Nissan Maxima first drive film. And uh, sadly, there is an embargo. Uh, we will have this film to you uh, bright and early on June 3rd. Uh, until then, I wanted to come and chat with you guys about some of the comments that we've gotten on our world premiere episode of the 2016 Nissan Maxima. And there was a general theme of what you guys are looking for here. Uh, one, I kind of expected, which is ditch the CVT. Uh, number two, and I've got interesting things to say about the CVT in the full episode, so let's put a pin in that discussion until we actually drive the car together. Um, the second was all-wheel drive. I really didn't see this one coming from you guys, but I can kind of get it because there are some cars in these segments that actually do offer all-wheel drive. And then uh, I really didn't see this one coming. Brembo brakes in a Maxima. I guess, hey, you know, whatever works. Uh, and then there was a Nismo idea of a Nismo Maxima. That's interesting to me, um, but really think about this. Is there room for a Nismo Maxima and Infinity? Or is there room for a Nismo Maxima that's front wheel drive? I mean, these are really, these are serious questions that a product planner has to explore when they're looking at a $35,000, dollars $40,000 plus car. Because I've said this a couple of times to you guys, the minute you go over $40,000 in price, you have your volume. So when you try to make an investment into making a very sporty model, how many people are actually going to buy it, especially when you do a manual transmission? Because you and I both know that we would love to see a brown manual transmission, all-wheel drive, diesel, Nissan Maxima, with a panoramic sunroof, and while we're at it, probably a station wagon version. But there's like two people that would buy it, me and one of you guys that's out there. Uh, anyway, I digress. There were some other really interesting comments. One that I'm starting to see more of, not just in the comments of Nissan Maxima, is Wi-Fi. And I, I gotta say, GM was kind of ahead of the curve on this one, because they were really one of the first that installed it system-wide, or really um, company-wide in their cars. And now you're starting to see more companies like Audi's got it, Mercedes got it. Um, and you're gonna see it in more Nissans, obviously. I don't think these have it just yet. Another thing that came up, and this was a big one we kind of touched upon this, is rear-wheel drive. Yes, of course, I'd love to see rear-wheel drive, but the question here is, and I kind of already posed it to you, is there room for a rear-wheel drive Maxima, or even an all-wheel drive Maxima, and an Infinity, really from the same company? Uh, another one, and this I thought was a really good couple of comments. There were a bunch of you that would like to see this car exported, and yes, this car is going to be exported, but the question specifically came from Australia, South Africa, and Europe. Now, I personally, I, I, we've discussed this, I've actually lived in Europe twice, um, and you don't see as many uh, Asian cars there as you do in the States. I would be intrigued to see if this car would do well over there, this size car would do well in the European market. For those of you that are living in Europe, I would love to know what well, your thoughts. Would you buy a car like this? Would you want to see a car like this? Because I think when it comes to Europe, it's more than just the actual product itself, I think there is some national identity to what car people buy. Uh, another comment that came up a lot, I totally agree with this one, is the head-up display. You're seeing that in a lot of cars. I mean, I just got out of a Hyundai Genesis that had a head-up display. And really, we, you know, I've discussed this how many times before, where I think this is just a safety measure. It's very simple. It takes your eyes and puts them above the hood line and you're looking straight at the car in front of you. So it's kind of a no-brainer. And you know, we talked about this with our friend David Leone at Cadillac, and he was very honest. He's like, look, we have it in an Escalade because an Escalade's a $70,000 car. We don't offer it in every ATS because that's a $30,000 car. Well, this is more than $30,000. Um, so I could see there probably is some room to put it in here, and I would definitely uh, strongly urge Nissan to do that. Another one that came up, which I think is a really good comment, this came up with a lot of people, obviously people who are really into Nissans is 3.7 engine. You know, it's in the Z and it's a great engine in the Z and you already have a couple of good transmissions that are attached to that engine. So that I think would be a really interesting option here. Maybe like uh, an SR that has the 3.7 engine, a manual transmission offering, and then some like DCT. That I think would be primo in the Maxima here. Maybe even like an all-wheel drive variant. I mean, now we're I make a wish list here, but now I'm starting to go back to what I said before. 
Oh, and then there's this, we can see this here. This was a really good point, and I totally, totally, totally agree. The Nissan key fob, this thing definitely needs to change. We just got out of the, um, the Volvo XC90, and the Volvo XC90, they like, you know, the design of this thing, I think they knocked it out of the park. I, I am so impressed with what uh, Nissan Design America did with this car. Uh, same with the Volvo XC90. But the Volvo people went so far as to completely reinventing a key fob for that car. I think Nissan should probably do the same thing here, because this was cool 10 years ago, but I think now they really need to update it. Uh, then there was, of course, the, the sunroof in the SR. And what do we have here? We've got a platinum over here. This one's got this beautiful panoramic sunroof you see here. It goes all the way the length of the roof of the car and even changes the look of the design a little bit because it's black up top and you really notice it like on that blue SR, you're gonna see in the full episode, they gave us a stunning color combination. This beautiful blue, it's, it's over there. I don't wanna turn the camera around because the light's bad that way, but it's a beautiful blue color. It's got like a tan interior with Alcantara inserts. This is the car actually. And ours had a, uh, a black spoiler in the back. I mean, the color combo was awesome. But imagine that with the black glass roof up here that, uh, just, okay, you know I'm a frustrated designer, so I gotta talk about this kind of stuff. Then, um, <laughs> Cameron Peterson, Cameron Peterson on YouTube. You, I think, have one of the most interesting comments. Uh, you would like to see, get ready for this one, Cameron Peterson would like to see the Nissan Maxima compete with a Hellcat. I think Nissan already does that, and it's called a GTR. On that note, I look forward to welcoming you back on June 3rd to see the first drive of this car. And we have some interesting things to share with you about the car because we've we had some extra time with it in uh, Nashville, just outside of Nashville, Tennessee, driving around Brentwood and Mount Juliet, all the beautiful roads out there. Um, but in the interim, I want to leave you guys with a question here. Now, I gave you kind of like the themes that we saw in uh, the comments from the episode that we released on April 2nd. But now that we're looking at the different cars here, like here's a Platinum, here's uh, an SV trim that doesn't have this kind of a base car here, uh, I really do want to find out from you export markets, which one of these would you like to see? Like, would you actually guys buy a Maxima? And if so, which one? Would you do the, the basic one here? Would you do the super duper full tilt Platinum over here? Or would you do the, the, uh, the SR that we're gonna drive in the full episode? Of course, we had to drive the SR. Let me know in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV, all in word, Moto Man TV, all in word. And until June 3rd, I look forward to uh, seeing and sharing Music City with you behind the wheel of a 2016 Nissan Maxima. We saw a turtle today. Oh no, it was turtle? A turtle, a, a deer, a hawk, no, not a hawk. Was it a hawk or was it a... Well, it could have been, I think they might have been eagles. No, definitely not an eagle. No, I definitely, maybe, no, I think he was a, I think he was a vulture or something vulture? like that. Yeah. He was a mean looking mofo. Yeah. He was a bird of prey, let me tell you. I don't know what it is that lately we've been having Animal Kingdom when we film. We had the, the wolf fox dude guy up in Malibu twice now. He's chased us. No exaggeration. I have proof of this. Anyway, I digress. Here we go. Ready to talk Maximas?